We are now at the close of DevNet Create. Over the last two days, we've been able to learn, do, and build so much together. Having watched many of the sessions, I know you all have been inspired to dig deep into new technologies and develop new skills. What's also been amazing is to see how many of you are connecting, communicating, and building together. One of the things we hear often about our community is how collaborative it is. I think that's the nature of software. We are a group that wants to and needs to work together. It's how we build things that can become more than the sum of their parts. As I said at the start of DevNet Create, we are a global team of problem solvers. We are agents of change. Now I'd like to bring your attention to another area that I know so many of you care about, helping others. Technology is such an empowering force from access to information to the creation of new inventions. Tech can be transformational. And we at Cisco and DevNet believe that more than anything, tech can be a force for good in the world, especially when we're all working together. To help discuss how the work we can do can address a higher purpose that helps people and our planet, I'd like to welcome Tay Yu to DevNet Create. Tay is the Senior Vice President within Cisco Corporate Affairs and leads Cisco's Social Investments and Stewards, our Corporate Social Responsibility Organization. Welcome, Tay. We are so happy to have you here. So, Tay, please tell us about Corporate Social Responsibility at Cisco and how that work supports the company's mission to power an inclusive future that benefits our employees, communities, and planet. So our focus is to really uh, use the technology in a global environment so it's inclusive of everyone to address key issues. There's a million great issues that we can get engaged in, but what we did was coalesced around four. One is economic development, education, uh, critical human needs and crisis response, and then environmental sustainability and rejuvenation. So we focus on those four areas and we set a really aggressive goal back in 2016 that we would positively impact a billion people with digital solutions by 2025. And every year we measure it and we come up with the numbers. And so we're already at over half a million people who are positively impacted. And we've also brought a rigor to this. And so we brought in uh, PwC to actually do, uh, you know, an external limited assurance of those numbers. So they went through and did the, the typical sampling and came back to us and said, this works, this doesn't work. And we were also uh, asking them to give us an assurance, not just on the numbers, but also that our work, our specific, you know, intervention and focus had a specific effect rather than saying we got together with 10 other companies and then claim that we were having impact. So uh, that's how we're focused. And the technology becomes incredibly important because uh, before it was a nice to have, and now technology is at the core of addressing everything from the most, ba you know, the basic needs to a uh, humanitarian crisis. Because our our initial reaction as human beings is to go and, you know, send water and food and blankets and whatever we need to do, when in reality, it's really important for us to understand where it happened, who to send things to, what's really needed. Uh, and it's the technology and particularly the communications infrastructure that makes the most basic of basic needs, which is that. Wonderful. I love the data-driven approach you're taking to that and measuring the impact. Um, and as far as impact goes, particularly with the last 18 months, we've all been living through this global pandemic. Tell me how you guys have shifted uh, your focus around that and, and what, what you've been doing around the pandemic the last 18 months. So there, there's two parts to the pandemic. One is that it helped us accelerate what we would already do. And the other is to make sure that we were inclusive and, and enabled those who didn't have access to internet and um, collaboration technologies to have that. So for instance, you had um, our uh, network academies, right? It's in 180 plus countries. 
uh, and over 3 million students were, went through the academy program last year. Uh, so a cumulative of almost uh, 14 million, uh, 15 million people since it started. And uh, what this does is teach people how to design, install, maintain networks, which is a critical piece. The network is uh, the, you know, the critical piece of economic, uh, you know, empowerment. And what they've been able to do is work with the program, the content, and the partnerships that the universities, community colleges, high schools uh, enabled them to be able to provide a, you know, blended uh, hybrid work environment, hybrid teaching environment, so they can continue to teach over that uh, period of time. And that's just one example of so many others. Uh, that's wonderful. Um, tell me, you know, there, there are so many, I've heard about so many different things that people can get involved in. And I, you know, I know that for, you know, my colleagues and friends and even myself, sometimes there are just so many opportunities. How would you um, sort of guide others in terms of how, how do you get engaged? How do you pick the thing to get involved in? You know, what, what would your advice be to someone that's looking for, you know, getting involved for the first time as an example? Yeah. So th there's several ways to do that. I would say one is figure out, you know, your core competencies. What are the things that you love to do that you are good at and you know that people could benefit from? Uh, so it's a particular skill, whether it is coding, whether it is mentoring, whether it's being a critical reviewer of a particular type of a product design. There's some things that are happening there. The second is, is it, you know, make it personal, something you're passionate about, a topic that you care about, whether it's the environment or autism or, you know, a local community, homelessness, those kinds of things. And then the last piece of it is really looking at how do I bring it together and create an environment that enables me to test something and scale it over time. So, um, you know, a couple of examples is this. Um, we have a global problem solver challenge. And, you know, one of the things that I've been saying for the last decade is that we don't really know what the future jobs look like. We can look out five years, maybe 10 years in certain instances. But the reality is, is that uh, we are going to have to create the jobs of the future. So um, one of the most important things that we think we need to do is, you know, as well as the imbuing the skills such as problem solving and critical thinking, collaboration, uh, persuasion, communications, a combination of hard skills and soft skills. Uh, but with that is innovation and entrepreneurship. How do we instill this entrepreneurship muscle and then enable people to practice it and exercise that muscle regularly so that they're very comfortable with it? And that's where the GPS challenge comes in, Global Problem Solvers. And we last year, we awarded about a million, a million dollars in prize money. And it enabled us to give prizes in multiple categories, uh, such as uh, environmental sustainability and inclusion. So if you are looking at a couple of examples, one is Remora. And what they do is, is they're focused on um, carbon sequestering. So if you look at the reality of the situation, and we saw this up, up close and personal during uh, the pandemic and, you know, sheltering in place. What we did was is the number of Amazon trucks or FedEx trucks or UPS trucks all across the freeways were so intense because we were getting things delivered because we've gone to this e-commerce environment, but they have to physically deliver this stuff. That's not going to go away because, you know, they're still going to use fossil fuels for many years to come. The question is, is are we able to sequester that carbon? So what this team did is they used it based on research of um, an individual who came out of University of Michigan. So when you ask the question, how do I get engaged? Sometimes it's connecting with your university or your community college um, and looking at entrepreneurs and getting on their team. So what they did was is they came up with this solution of creating a carbon capture mechanism. And what it does is it attaches to the tailpipe of the truck and they're able to capture the carbon, sequester it in this gravel-like, the molecules attach to this gravel-like substance. Uh, and then they are able to measure how much is in there. So they need to, whether they need to switch it to another uh, sequestering device, measure how much carbon comes out and then are able to either sell it to a concrete developers or permanently sequester them in dried up oil wells. So when you think about this, this enables 
um, you know, for instance, trucks to be able to continue to capture that, but also be able to get and deliver things. So that would be one example. Um, another example is uh, Jangala, which was a young person who was out there working in remote places such as Africa and realized that connectivity was not available to them. And they created the big box, which is basically taking existing um, technologies that were out there individually, whether it's 4G, 5G, um, you know, hardline broadband, radio frequencies, and being able to create um, a box that enables about 300 people at a time to have internet access so they can continue their education, continue to communicate with those they love, um, be you know curious about opportunities, and, and most importantly, at some point, become an entrepreneur and be able to sell their products and uh, collaborate in terms of development. So I think a lot of it has to do with what people are passionate about, and maybe I'm gonna do some shameless um, um, advertising here, but what we do have is a GPS challenge. We have it every year. We would love to get judges uh, involved in this, and there's multiple categories, whether it's environmental, whether it's social, whether it's inclusive, um, emerging technologies, all of that is in there. It would be great to get people engaged and be a judge. It's a good way to get to know some entrepreneurs um, and also to share some, some skills and experience. Wonderful. What a great way to, to you know, have a call to action for our wonderful community of, of technologists that are here. It's simple, easy way to sign up and, and actually get involved. I love your thinking around just building that entrepreneurship muscle and also just that cycle of you know, being able to give access to people so they can learn tech, so they become entrepreneurs and it becomes like this ongoing cycle of, of giving, contributing and, and creating greater value within our broader community. I love, love, love what you're doing there. Um, you, you mentioned that one of the other things that you recommend is to really find something that you're passionate about. What are you personally passionate about, Tay? So right now, one of the most important things that I see is um, the homelessness situation. Um, and you see entire families who are not able to um, uh, are not able to survive, and many of them children living in cars and then trying to go to school, and then when schools closed. Uh, sometimes the school was a place a lot of children got their first meal, you know, the, the, their major meal, because there's a school lunch program, uh, not just in the U.S., but also in India and other places around the world, the, the U.N. F food program and, and USAID and all of that. So there's a lot of incentives to get, um, you know, children to schools. Uh, but homelessness is something that we at Cisco have been very, very focused on. Um, there is actually a sleep out. Uh, it's a virtual sleep out this year. We used to uh, raise money, uh, you know, with employees and with partners um, and a group of people would sleep outside. We did it outside of building 11 in 2019 in the back of uh, building nine. Um, and uh, we were able to raise multiple millions of dollars for Covenant House. Uh, and then there is organizations like Destination Home. Uh, and what they do is, is they work with public agencies and private donors to come up with a playbook and an assessment of how you can address homelessness. Um, the food bank is a great place uh, that we've all been engaged with. We had employees who were actually seconded there. Uh, and they were able to look at their logistics and supply chain because uh, Second Harvest and, and um, Feeding America, for instance, as an example, is actually a distribution point. They're the ones who go and you have to have a forecast of how much food is coming in, fresh food versus donated food, and then they distribute that to soup kitchens and churches. Uh, and so it was working with them uh, the year that they were seconded, they ended up, you know, being able to save enough money to do an additional 2.4 million meals. So we like to put some measurements around uh, the work so we know the impact that we've had as a company or with our technology. So, Grace, it's just been a real pleasure to get to know you. And um, what I always find fascinating is uh, when you get to know someone, you get to know what some of their passions are. And as we talk about this space, you know, what are you passionate about? I have been really passionate about diversity and inclusion for a really long time and have, um, you know, started 
programs like mentoring rings at places like Microsoft and Atlassian. And, you know, as I think about, you know, sort of the global pandemic and how we're operating today, I'm sure that to some degree, you know, some of some people are sort of struggling with like, how do I do that now in this completely virtual world? How do I find a mentor or a sponsor? How does that work? Um, any thoughts there from you around and maybe work you're, you're doing or ideas that you might want to share with our community on, on things they might be doing to, to help solve this? Well, actually, this is that's a really um, great uh, segue into something that we've all see, seen play out um, during the pandemic, which was that we're used to uh, being able to connect physically with people who come over and are, are mentors or sponsors. You could, you know, meet them. You either go to a school to to mentor a young young student, or you meet somebody in the office over coffee to talk about those things. But I actually think that there is a silver lining here in that with collaboration and the technologies that are available, that you're not just limited to where you're located and somebody you physically can meet up with. You actually have the ability to be mentored by almost anyone anywhere in the world. Um, and the focus is on specific topics. Sometimes we get assigned a mentor, but they may mentor us on the soft skills. Uh, how to deal with certain things, but they may not be able to mentor us on a project. Think about the possibilities that are out there. If I can just, I'm working on a specific project and what I really need is an engineering mentor who has a very specific skill set, let's say in um, coding, you know, Python, uh, that I could actually have more than one mentor. So I think that the, the technology can actually make the world bigger uh, in terms of opportunity. So I think that that's something that that we'll see happening over time. But, um, you know, the 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 passion and the focus shouldn't change. It's just how we are able to achieve, um, you know, achieve that can be opened up because of the technology. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Um, and, you know, this event is actually a great example of a virtual event, which has a, 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 the ability to facilitate networking across the board with people who may have never come to the event in person. And so we're connecting people globally right now in this in this event uh, of create DevNet create right now. So um, from that perspective, I know we, we talked a little bit earlier about how to get involved. And, you know, it, it occurs to me that sometimes what's sort of um, daunting is this, this idea of getting involved in something really big. But I think we all have this opportunity of thinking about you know sort of the snowball effect of starting really small and, and letting that effect grow as you collaborate and join forces with other people um any other thoughts there in terms of like specifics for for people to to get involved just those baby steps what would you recommend so there's several things first and the most immediate is the devnet create bright fund so you could get engaged and, and contribute to that uh, the other thing is is and it's literally right in your backyard is that with covenant house there is about two thousand young people who have nowhere to sleep and so part of the awareness and fundraising we're doing as a company uh, is to sleep outside uh, and we're doing it virtually. And what a lot of employees did was they got their kids involved um, just to, to sh uh, help them become aware of uh, this, the situation around homelessness, uh, but also to raise money. And so you can literally sleep in your backyard in a tent on your patio with your kids um, by yourself with a friend with your dog or your cat uh, and everything that you raise that's not matched by cisco will be matched by john mortgage the former ceo and chairman of the company so that's a, a great thing to get engaged and then if you just want to browse through our website at csr.cisco.com that would be a great way just to look at all the different projects there. And we would be more than happy to connect you with some of our NGOs and social entrepreneurs and their networks uh, for you to get engaged. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Tate, for joining us today and for inspiring us with the wonderful work that you're doing within your group for Cisco and also, you know, giving us some really tangible examples of how we all can get involved and contribute here. Thank you so much for your time and for just being an inspiration here today. It was a pleasure. It's good to talk to you. I want to thank Tay again for joining us, talking about the power of tech and the power of community to solve problems from global warming to learning coding. 
And if you were inspired to action, I'd encourage all of you to take advantage of a new feature we have at DevNet Create. New this year at Create, we are proud to be able to offer the DevNet Create Bright Fund. Through this fund, we can speak as a single community to promote diversity in STEM and support the fight to end racism and discrimination through global education. Join us to celebrate the empowering nature of all developers. Find the link to donate on our website, developer.cisco.com slash DevNet Create. Well, we've reached the end of another DevNet Create. I hope you all have enjoyed this event as much as we did in producing it. And even though we're closing out the conference, the real work now begins. I invite you agents of change to seek out your new projects, dream big, and build new innovations, solutions, and inventions. I'll leave you with a note of encouragement and advice that I received from a good friend. Shoot for the moon in all your endeavors. You may miss, but you'll still end up among the stars. So let's get to work. Let's connect, collaborate, and create. I'm so excited to see what you'll do next. See you soon.